This is Dean Crumlish, and today we're going to get started using Copley. So I'm going to show you three simple steps to powering, powering up your drive, connecting over the serial port, and enabling the drive. So I just got a new Xenus drive from engineering. Um, we'll need to start uh, by hooking up 24 volt power supply and I got a, a motor here with a this feedback we'll have to hook up um, we don't need AC power until it's time to enable so we can get started without AC and then follow up with that in a little bit and the serial connection is what we're going to use to connect to the drive and I should also mention the STO safe torque off Jumpers need to be installed to bypass the safety mechanism on the drive. So to get started, um, we'll hook up the cable up the uh, the drive here. Um, I've got uh, AC power here. I've, I'm not going to plug it in yet. I've got the 24 volt power supply connected here. Just, uh, you know, less than an amp is fine. Um, I've got a motor here, three-phase brushless motor with uh, BIS-C encoder for absolute position, thanks to uh, Quick Servo. I've got the um, serial cable kit, SER-CK, and a B&B &B USB to serial adapter with the drivers installed. Um, I'll show you where... The accessory items are in the data sheet here. So we need the uh, serial cable kit, the connector kit, and of course, you know, a, a Zenus drive. Um, I think I've got the uh, Zenus Compact 23015 here. We'll check that out in a minute. So that's the uh, hardware you need. Uh, connect 24-volt uh, power to power up the drive. And um, after that, we'll want to install CME2. So go to copleycontrols.com to find the software. On the menu, you can go to the download page. Under downloads, you can find CME2 version 7.0. And uh, after you download it in a zip format, you can run the setup application. What that will do is uh, put CME2 on your desktop. I've got CME2 version 7.1 Special Engineering Release 30. This allows me to talk to drives that are not released yet. Uh, copy motion folder and CME2 documents. Uh, the motion folder contains uh, amp data, motor data, and firmware um, folders that we use with CME2. And of course the documents uh, using CME2 and other similar important documents. So I'm going to try to run CME2 now. Hopefully I've got my drive powered up and my serial cable plugged in. So this gives me a moment to do that. My drive's not enabled yet anyway, so I don't have to worry about enabling it. So CME2 version 7.1 is described here, connected to a Xenus Compact 23012. And a lot of the screens are grayed out because I have not done any of the setup yet. This is a new drive. Um, you may have to answer the communication questions uh, if you've never used the serial port before so we'll select serial port uh, add com6 because that's the one I'm using and leave the baud rate to the default don't don't lower it unless it's necessary it's probably not necessary and we'll connect to the drive so we read the parameters from the drive there's not much in it right now um, we can see the motor screen's alive. I can read and write to the, 
to the disk, save to flash, re retrieve from flash. Um, the first thing we want to do is the basic setup. This describes what we have. I'm going to change the settings. I have a brushless rotary motor. Uh, I do not have incremental encoder with halls, which is fine if you do. I have a BIS absolute encoder on my motor. That's my primary feedback, so I have it wired to my feedback connector. I'm going to do position mode, and the source of my commands eventually will be EtherCAT. Uh, we could do software program, repulse and direction, different modes of operation. Uh, sinusoidal commutation, I could use pulse and direction, but I'm going to emulate the output. So at my output, I'll have emulated encoder pulses from my absolute encoder. So these changes are saved to flash, and now it's time to get the motor data. Now normally you enter the motor data from the motor manufacturer's data sheet, but I've got a file here for the quick servo. Oh, it's an absolute A. Okay, it's not a BIS-C, so I'll use the file value for the absolute A. Go back and change that. Change settings. Uh, absolute A. Okay, now I can open up my file. There. So my encoder, one revolution is 20 bits. 1 million counts per rev, multi-turn, um, there's the, the baud rate, no battery, but uh, I'm going to ignore the battery fault. And the data for the motor, it's an 8-pole brushless motor with 4 newton meters of peak torque, 1.3 continuous, some theoretical top speed, probably could go faster than that. 7,000. Oh, I've got a lot of counts per rev. All right, we'll stick with that. Torque constant, back EMF constant. Note the similarity between the torque constant and the back EMF constant, constant in volts per radians per second. Just checking out the numbers, 40 volts per kRPM. Some resistance and inductance. This is all used to calculate initial tuning parameters. So I press calculate and I'll get initial tuning parameters, which includes my peak and continuous currents, etc. And I'll say OK to that. Uh, it looks like the file has phasing information. I'll use the phasing information here. That was nice. So now the other screens come alive and I can see I have current limits and gains on the I loop, the V loop. Let's see if I can go faster here. Let's not set a limit unless we need to. Okay. P loop gains, trajectory limits. All this is calculated from the good motor data we got. I'm going to save this to flash in case the power gets cycled. I don't want to lose my calculations. Um, so one of the first things we want to do with our motor is uh, try to enable it. And um, if we take a look at the base, the control panel, we can see we've got a few conditions that are preventing us from enabling. So I'm going to clear the encoder fault. Motor over temp. Let's get rid of that one too. We'll go to the input-output screen. I don't have a motor temperature switch hooked up. I don't think I need one because I have current limit set. So we'll get rid of that fault. Good. Under voltage. Uh, that's not a fault, but that's going to prevent me from enabling my drive. So I'll plug that in in a minute. I've got a STO, S safe torque off. 
Uh, I've got the bypass jumper. I'm going to plug in. Uh, real quick, we can take a look at the data sheet. Stow dash bypass. So the stow bypass um, is, to, is to bypass the safety feature. There's some jumpers that go across a couple of pins, and you'll be able to enable your drive. So the stow is good. I have a hardware disable. Input 1 is configured by default as active low enables with clear fault. That's fine. I can put a switch external to the drive on the control connector or just pull it down. It's low. I'm hardware enabled. So the only condition I have is a software disable and an under voltage preventing me from enabling the drive. So I'm going to hook up power. No more under voltage. I have a uh, disable mode. Um, I have a EtherCAT mode. I still can't enable my drive because the EtherCAT master is not connected enabling my drive. So I could, um, I could do the jog mode and enable the drive. That worked here. But uh, first, I should check my phasing. There is an auto phasing procedure. You can use that. I'm kind of techie, so I like the manual phasing. Under tools, manual phase. And I can enable a vector of current. Let's give it uh, a little larger current. Let's try an amp. This motor can handle 3.5 amps, so if I had a load connected, that would be difficult to phase, so my motor is unloaded. I rotate the current vector forward. The current vector is in black and the feedback is in red. If I have an offset, due to the, motor's manufacturer, uh, the motor manufacturer's mounting of the feedback device, it's always the same, so I'm going to have to put in an offset correct that. Um, we're going to look at the position counts here. When I go press forward, my counts should go up. Uh, if I look at the shaft of my motor and I press forward, at the moment it's going counterclockwise. I could invert that, but then I'd have to uh, invert the feedback too. But I'm okay with counterclockwise being forward, so we'll just leave that alone. Okay, uh, if I made any changes, that would save the flash. And again, my current limits are saved to flash because I pressed the save to flash button. Um, I'm going to do a bandwidth test, so this will be the first time that I've enabled the drive um, in, a, in a mode that's uh, other than micro-stepping. We're in a current mode doing the bandwidth test. 700 hertz of current loop bandwidth. That's pretty good. That'll allow me to spin my motor. I like a kilohertz, so next time we'll learn how to tune it. But for now, we're going to enable the drive. We still can't enable because the EtherCAT master is not connected. As a matter of fact, when I do a jog, I want to disconnect my EtherCAT master. I don't want the master telling me what to do when I'm going to test out and jog the motor. So disconnect the EtherCAT master physically from the drive. I don't have one connected, so I don't have to worry about it. Check the Enable Jog Option checkbox. Press and hold the forward button. And we're jogging the motor in the forward direction. I grab the shaft. We can see the current go up. Uh, negative direction. So that's it. And it enabled the drive. Spun the motor. All that from some calculated motor values. And thank you for learning how to connect the, the copley.